Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Let's take a roll call. Doug. Here. Dylan. Here. Gaston. Here. Ellie. Here. And I am here. So we are called to order. Um, the next thing to do is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Um, if you have a general, this is not specific public com comments related to if your um, hearing is coming up later, but just a general public comment. And if you have public comment, please hit the, the button, the hand, raise your hand button down at the bottom of your screen. And seeing none, um, no public comment, we'll move on to our licenses. So we have some special short-term alcohol serving licenses um, up tonight. And Steve, would you like to introduce these? So these are um, three licenses for the um, UMass is doing some events at Garber Field. Um, we do have Christopher Fisher, who is the, um, the coordinator for these events and I can um, allow him to talk. Oh, super, like. great. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Um, would you like to let us know about these events? This is the lacrosse team. Yes, hello. Um, thanks Hi. for having me. Sure. Uh, so we have, athletics has requested that concessions sells alcohol at the lacrosse games, um, specifically the dates that were furnished, not every game. And um, the this would all be at Garber Field and all alcohol would be sold um, through the concessions set up that will currently be there selling food and soda and water and the rest of the items. Okay, great, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Fisher about these licenses? Yes, Doug. Um, just a couple of things. <clears throat> I think we granted a license like this last year for a few times, was that the case? I'm just curious if, if you were involved, I can't recall, and so I'm sorry if you were and I forget, but sort of how it went last year and uh, the other question is just, um, is it a single concession stand that would be selling or are there multiple locations? I, I just, I'm not familiar with the, with the um, particular setup at, at Garber. Sure, so last year we did not. Last year, um, we actually didn't have concessions open. I think that in the 2020, 2021 season, there was uh, talk about having this but everything shut down before we had any sort of chance. So we have not done any alcohol sales at this. I would consider this sort of an outdoor venue, although it is gated and ticketed. Um, so I don't have experience with it yet. And there is only one concession area within Garber Field. It's a fairly small area. The, the fence is very close to the field itself. And then there's a set of bleachers on one side and we're to the side of the bleachers. Okay, thank you. Yes, Doug. No, nope, that's all. Uh, Hallie. I think when I remember when we were talking about this years ago, pre pandemic, I think the biggest concern, if I remember correctly, the board had was how do you mark people who've been served to prevent people from sneaking alcohol in or de at least like designating like who's been actually sold the alcohol and is drinking it. I think that if I can remember correctly, that was the biggest hiccup we came up with as the board of like ways that it could go south. And I did not have a chance to review your permit. Are you going to stamp people over 21 who've been served or give a wristband or anything like that? Um, sure. So we, we do have a lot of experience now with Mullen Center and selling alcohol. So, so what we do is we tips certify our uh, cash register, our, our cashiers. Um, so everyone at the cash register is 
ID at the point of sale. Um, they have to be 21. They have to not be visibly intoxicated. If they've already been drinking, it's usually fairly apparent. We do not sell. Uh, it's not worth taking any chances. We don't wristband. We don't hand stamp things like that. It um, it really doesn't physically stop anyone from passing a beverage. There's there's no one going through the stands checking for everyone drinking to have a stamp on their hand. Um, that would be a little obtrusive. It probably would get in the way of enjoying the event if we did. So what we do is just to, our due diligence to make sure that alcohol is not sold to anyone under the age of 21 or anyone who shouldn't be buying more alcohol. We also limit where you can only purchase two units of alcohol per transaction, which sometimes throttles down the line because we, you know, if one person wants to buy a round of eight beers for their four friends, we don't allow it. They have to actually make individual transactions. So to, to the point, uh, I think that you're asking, we, we try to make sure that nobody is hoarding or you know, consuming or purchasing large volumes of alcohol at once. It's two per transaction, period. Great. Alan and then Doug. Uh, just one question for, um, so ticket holders, I, it's, this area is in a gated off area. You're not checking people's tickets. They have to have a ticket to be in the area in the first place. Am I correct about that? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Good, thanks, Doug. Just to follow up on <clears throat> sort of monitoring after the point of sale, you know, after the point of sale, obviously, um, are you just doing a, well, two questions really. One is, uh, is it just a visual inspection of ID or do you have like a card reader? Just curious about that. Um, and then secondly, uh, you know, what kind of uh, just general presence security wise do you guys have that you have? I mean, separate from, uh, you know, specifically like looking for something like an ID or a band, you know, a, a wristband kind of thing, but just generally, you know, what's your approach to the, uh, control and observation at the at the facility, you know, what's your expectation of that? I mean, I, I don't think anybody's gonna get out of hand. I think it's, you know, it's a small enough venue and, and that sort of thing. It's not just generally kind of thinking about what are you guys thinking about from a crowd control and monitoring circumstance and what's your approach to that with, with staff and kind of in and amongst the crowd. Um, sure, so uh, the first question, we do not have a card reader. We do visually inspect IDs. Um, the, the second question, uh, again, we haven't done this yet. So um, when required, I know in the past, there have been um, Green Mountain security staff brought in for this type of event to run sort of the crowd control in case things get out of hand. Um, if we think that this venue is small enough, then, um, I mean, UMPD is always a presence. They're always very close by if something does go wrong. Um, but yeah, th those might be the only two options I, I can think of for us. Oh, uh, just uh, so is, is on events when you don't have alcohol service, which would be all of them up to now, um, do you have Green Mountain there as your, as your sort of event security? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, so I guess I, just to follow up on that a little bit, I'm just trying to understand sort of operationally, you know, you obviously have people there that are, are scanning the tickets as people come in. Um, but outside of that, and then actually people at the concession stand, is there not, there's not a presence of, of staff in and amongst the crowd at that point? So, um, no, that, certainly not our staff. And um, it is two different departments. So athletics does the ticketing and... Um, grounds, facilities, maintenance. Um, they may have people sort of working the crowd in some capacity or another, but from, from the um, food, money, alcohol control standpoint, anything concessions wise, I, I do not. I, I don't have anyone in the crowd or any sort of security. And I, I, I have not seen at this specific venue or any of the outdoor concessions, um, I have not seen Green Mountain um, yeah, overtly. Uh, but again, there may be one. There may be one with the ticket stand. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, it, it might be a question for us as board to think about is, is whether or not we want to ask the athletic department what their sort of general security policy is, you know, sort of crowd control. If, if, if the food service folks are not doing that, and I'm saying they should or shouldn't or who should or shouldn't, I'm just sort of thinking about, um, you know, obviously if we don't sell it to somebody, you know, if, if, if the TIP certified is going to, you know, identify a lot of the folks that might be 
uh, on their way to a, a, a state of, of intoxication that, that we're uncomfortable with. But but once they sort of leave the leave the uh, concession area, that's really I'm, I'm sort of curious about what the university as a whole is thinking about, kind of keeping an eye on on folks. And and that would be true in some ways. I'm I'm sort of curious about this, just independent of alcohol sales, sort of you know, fans get unruly or do they have some presence in, in the athletic department, I presume would be the ones that are, are, are perhaps we, who, should, who we should ask about it. Um, I guess the question I will follow up with, did, how much have you liaised with, with athletics? Did they kind of request this as an option of, of something that they'd like to have or, or was this, you know, sort of what brought this forward, I guess is kind of what I'm thinking and, and may play into that sort of question of, of crowd control. It was requested. I, I think that the crowd is going to be light enough that in terms of money and income, it's really not, it's, it's not anything that I would value. It's simply just so that folks can enjoy it. It's just a value add. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people like to like to have a beer with the game and it's part of that sort of culture and atmosphere. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm certainly operationally confident that we can pull it off, but not enthusiastic about it as a revenue driving force for UMass, you know, lacrosse. Right. Right. I think that's, that's fine. I was just, you know, thinking about, um, well, you know, we, we tried to think about worst case scenarios. Sorry. That's kind of a, what we do. That makes sense. I understand. <laughs> and, and so, you know, sort of just trying to get my head wrapped around sort of, you know, the request to you to, to sort of offer this as a, as a, as an option, which is you know not unheard of or uh, you know surprising in some ways, and it's just sort of have the folks that made that request if they're sort of doing the large the line share of the sort of you know ticket and uh, crowd management. You know, are they are they prepared to sort of be a partner with you and in, in keeping an eye on things? Yeah, I don't have any expectation there'll be an issue. You know, no, not, not at all. I think if that's what the board says, then I would simply charge that off to athletics. If you want to have uh, alcohol sales at this event, then you need to hire two security guards or whatever it happens to be. And if they want to have it, then they can hire them. So I, I don't think that's unreasonable at all. I, I think they would do that. Well, for, for me, I was mostly putting it as a sort of food for thought for my colleagues on the on the board to think about. And, as we consider the application, so. Sure. Thanks, uh, questions, anyone else? Gaston? Um, no, I, I don't. I mean, I, I, um, I think D Doug's questions are, 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 are well taken. I mean, uh, it doesn't sound like these are big affairs. I, um, I wonder if anything, if um, we, you, you might be able to give us a report back after the first time and, and, um, and just, because we're doing something a little new from uh, previous one day licenses. Um, I don't know if, if that seems like a reasonable request to inform us. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. I mean, uh, Dylan, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, Garber Field, a couple of images. It, it's, um, it's just two uh, sets of stands on one side and then a grassy area to sit on the other side. Am I correct about that? The, well, that hill, they don't really allow people to sit there. Um, it. So it's really just the two sets of bleachers. And um, I've never seen that field, even at playoff games, to the point where the bleachers don't hold the, the spectators. It's, it's never been full that I've seen. And um, <clears throat> the, the um, police detail, how many officers is that? Uh, but once again, I, I did not really sure if there's a standard police detail. I, I just know that if we call UMPD when there's an issue, their response time is very quick. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So there, there wasn't a plan for a police detail? I, I do not believe so. I, I not, not from, I was not going to hire a police detail. Okay, but there is um, the security detail you said? I, again, not, not from our department. I was not going to hire a security detail. Okay. Uh, I just wonder just uh, how, how do you guys handle, um, I don't know, maybe this was answered to Doug and I, I missed it. How, how do you guys handle uh, unruly guests? You just said you call UMPD, one of the staff, uh, just watching will say something to them directly or just general procedure of alcohol or no alcohol. Kind of how's that handled? Well, I, 
I, uh, I feel like I'm jinxing myself here, actually. I, I don't like to do that. But I mean, we, so again, in the Mullen Center, where we'll have, you know, 6,000 people or so, um, it, it hasn't really been an issue, um, at least not as it relates to alcohol. I, I mean, I've seen people, unfortunately, with masks have to be escorted out. But um, so, it, so yeah, it, it hasn't been, it's new for us too, as I say, you know, you don't need security. I, I, from my standpoint, I don't need security to sell a hot dog. So it's just never been something I've had, I've been asked to do. Um, and I've never noticed a presence of security because I have never observed anyone um, being unruly. And, um, you know, there's unsportsmanlike, but, but that's not, you know, again, I think someone from athletics would just go up and say, Hey, you can't, you can't shout those words. Um, so there is not a security presence that I've observed. And I, I think if that is a sticking point for the license, um, then I will, will hire one. Well, you know, I'll pass that cost on to athletics. I'll let them know that that's requisite for the license and we'll bring someone in. Um, I just, I'm not sure that it's, uh, it's not a big student crowd. It, it tends to be families of the, the players coming to see, it, you know, and, um, it's not like, you know, visions of say a, a football a, a tailgate party or something. It's, there's not, there really is none of that. It's, it's very mild, very tame. They're there for the game. Um, so, so yeah, so I don't want like, I don't, I, I'm not trying to um, talk my way out of it. As I say, like, if we need to have security there, we can have security there, but I'm not, um, I'm not really, uh, I don't, I don't have good answers for you because it's not something I've done uh, or observed. Uh, Doug and then Hug. Yeah, I think that the question really around security is one we need to pose to the athletic department because I'm sure they have somebody because I, I just, you know, for any number of reasons they, they do regardless of concessions, whether it's concessions or not. So I think, I think that's our, our thing. I think what we may want to do is if, if we have some concern because I don't want to impose something on the license if uh, you know, that sort of um, doubles up an effort that's already being made. In other words, this may be something that athletics has thought about or it's, it's got staff on hand that they feel like they can handle the circumstances and we may feel they can too. So we don't want to sort of make, uh, you know, our, our applicant here sort of go to the trouble of, of figuring out, you know, some security thing that he's going to then charge the athletic department you know, and the athletic department's going to come back to him and say, well, what, what are you doing? I've, we've already got people, right? So what we may want to do uh, or one suggestion I would have is that we we maybe if we approve these you know contingent upon some more information regarding security like some you know just understanding of what the athletic department is doing if they don't have anything and so we may have to you know in, empower Steve as our liaison here to sort of get that answer about the athletic department and what their role you know what they're thinking is around security and you know if if uh, you know if he feels like that's not sufficient then then sort of impose upon them, you know, some, some level of, of uh, getting some security officers on hand. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if we can do that all in sort of one motion where we sort of make it contingent upon the answer that the athletic department gives Steve. You know. I, I, I guess we can word that somehow. Um, Helly, did you have a question? Thanks, Doug. Uh, more just a comment for our group that based on what I'm hearing I'd be inclined to approve the license knowing that UMass also wants this to succeed. And so if there are issues, I'm sure the police force will come and they can then change things for the future. I'd, I'm very curious to see how the events go, but I wouldn't want to make this too burden, burden, burdensome if this is not going to be a huge event. Okay, thanks, Kelly. Dylan. Yeah, the last thing I'll, I'll just say is I, I I really don't care to impose any um, mandate that they have to have security. I, I I think the worst case scenario of something like this would be somebody getting rowdy enough that any staff on the field will will notice and and can certainly interact with them. I uh, I was mostly just curious of of what they had in mind, but I'm. Um, I don't think we have to impose that they uh, they have security there. I'm fine approving these licenses just as they are. All right. What is everybody else a guest on or Doug? Do you have a different opinion about it? Or because I think for some of the other 
UMass short terms? Do we ask for security if it's? I mean, I, 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 I like Doug's suggestion of, uh, of uh, you know, Chris just following up to find out what, if anything, was contemplated by, by the other departments and as a kind of an FYI for us to know. Um, and then I, it, it looks like this first event, it, the first game is, is April 29th. Is that right? It's April 2nd. Oh, April. Okay, April, it was in April. In any case, I mean, I you know, I I um, you know, I think it would be great if 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 Chris could uh, send uh, Steve a note after the first event, um, and and then Steve can relay to that us to, to us the the information, and maybe we would like to ask Chris to come back. Uh, but um, I I think it's uh, good to find out how this goes and and um, and keep it keep it lean and but know what's going been contemplated as the Doug was asking. Okay, so we have the sort of two parts where we want to approve yet would like to know if the UMass Athletics Department had anything kind of and it was had something envisioned as regards to security with this situation. Is that correct before this we go into this? But at the same time we'd like a report after the first one. Does that sound fair? Is there some way, Doug, you would you on promotion. I mean, uh, so I'll, I'll actually do all three at once. It's like I moved okay. to approve the, the three short-term licenses for the top of campus in Inc. Uh, at Garber Field for the 2nd, 16th, and 29th of April. Um, you know, with uh, with the request to, you know, to get some feedback from, from the applicant uh, as to how the first event went. Um, I think I'll stop there. I think we can ask Steve, you know, in a non-motion way, we can ask Steve to just follow up with athletics because I'm sure they've got something in place and he can just report back to us what he finds out. Okay, great. Thanks, Doug. Is everybody happy with that? All right, uh, fantastic. Second. All right, thank you, Dylan. That? You have a motion? Oh, yes. Steve, was that you? No, I was just saying I can do that and follow up with Mr. Fisher about um, what the security plan might be from athletics and forward that along to you. Okay, super. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. Um, five to zero. The short-term alcohol serving licenses for Garber Field are approved. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Fisher, for coming in. We're really curious to hear how the first one went. And um, best of luck. Thank you very much. I'll follow up with athletics, and I'll get you guys a report afterwards. I appreciate it. Oh, super. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. And who is the second on that motion? Oh, that was Dylan. Dylan, okay. Yeah. Okay, so next up, our application by farmer wineries for licenses to sell at a farmer's market. Um, the first one is Home Fruit Wine with, uh, from Lori Perkins. And this is something we have done before. Is that correct, Steve? We did this last year for the farmer's yes. market. Yes, yeah, this has happened uh, every year since times. we started doing this, I believe. So, okay. Um, yeah, they, so they do is, need this. So these are these are um, farmer wineries, much like the Amherst Farm Winery. They're licensed by the state. Right. Um, they get further licensing from the Department of Agriculture to serve at um, farmers markets, and then the town local licensing authority just has to approve them for them to serve at their farmers market. Okay. So this would be for the one on the town common. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, hi, Lori. Hi. Hi. Great. Welcome. Um, so, is there anything else you'd like to to say before we? I just want to say thank you for allowing us to um, participate in the Amos Farmers Market the last few years. It is really great market and I think the town really appreciates it. it brings in a lot of good um, patrons to the town. Mm -hmm. So um, we haven't had any problems there with COVID. We hadn't been able to serve um, tastings and we're hoping that this year maybe we'll be able to do that. Um, so okay. I don't know. I don't know if it's up to the actual market or, or you people whether we can do the tastings or the board of health. Oh, I don't know. Steve, do you know? Oh, Doug, you know? I was just going to say we. I mean, we can approve the license, and then the, I think the board of health has the probably the final say relative to the health questions. But we can. I, I think our approving this license allows for it, and then it's just does that other board allow for it? So they'll make their decision. Uh, you know when when they get there <laughs> okay okay that, but yeah. I, mean, I think the license as it's as it is right now would would allow for it so then i think that clears the way and it 
you know, for them to serve and, and have tastings. It's really just, you know, once the Board of Health makes a decision about an outdoor event like that in, you know, in April, May, June, et cetera. And, and it may change yeah. over the course of time, depending on what happens with the-, with the Yeah, pandemic. we know. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Doug. It would just, um, this board could approve it and then it'd just be any pandemic restrictions the Board of Health might impose. Okay, super, um, great. So does anyone have any questions for Lori about this license? Everything is the same as it was last year and the year before that. If not, um, yes, Dylan. I uh, move to approve the license. Fantastic, thank you so much for the motion. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Doug. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Allie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The um, farmer winery license to sell at a farmer's market for home fruit wine is approved. Thank you very much for coming in, Lori, and uh, best wishes for the season. Thank you very much. Okay, so next up is Stony Brook Cider, also for the farmer's market. And it is Michael LaMontagne. Hello. Michael, you are muted if you're having trouble uh, speaking. Oh, he's muted. Mr. LaMontagne, you're muted. I wonder if he's there. Oh, maybe he's not there. Oh, there we are. Oh, that, nope, hi. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> hi. Good, good evening. Welcome. Um, so your license is the, your license application for the new year for the farmer's yes. market. Yes. Is there anything I've been, else? I've, I've been at the farmer's market for five years. I'm a, yes. member, I'm a member of the committee. Yes. for the Amherst Farmers Market. Um, I am TIP certified. Okay. I am insured at the Farmers Market for $1 million, $2 million. Okay. And I would like to uh, attend again. Fantastic. Um, is there anything else we need to know, Steve? Any questions for Mr. LaMontagne? I have uh, nothing else. Oh, no? No. Nope. All right. Um, if there are no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to approve the license for Stony Brook Cider. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Um, motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Gaston. He's on mute. Sorry, I. Karma. Oh, <laughs> Karma's quick. <laughs> and I vote I five to zero. Um, the license is approved. Thank you very much for coming in and um, best wishes for the summer and spring. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. I, Take care now. You too. Okay, great. So those are our licenses for the day. Um, discussion items, Jake's eggs, follow up, follow up discussion on temporary closing. And they, like are, they are both here. And just one quick here. question, the, the mover and seconder on the last um, the last vote was uh, um, Dylan and Doug again? Yes. Or is it Doug and Dylan? Um, I moved it. Okay. Dylan seconded. seconded. Thank you. All right. Let's... And Monopoly. <laughs> You're always welcome, Gaston. Raise your hand. I, you know, they got, they got um, uh, Jeopardy hands. They're, I was going to say, they're the dream team. Yes. Just, I'm looking out for Steve in the minutes, just keeping him simple. Okay. <laughs> Copy and paste. All right. Okay. So we have Chris Ware from Jake's Restaurant is here. Yes. Hello. Hi. How are you? Thank you so much for coming in. Of course. Of course. And, and I'm, uh, I'm also here. This is uh, Alex Washett. Oh, with hi, uh, yes. Jake's restaurant as well, just to... Right, thank you so much for coming in. Um, thank you, thanks for having us. So thanks for coming back and reporting on how things have been going and how have things been going? Well, uh, we are <laughs> still closed. Um, okay. It's, it's you know, it was, it's been going really well in our uh, Northampton location uh, because we were able to transfer all of our 
the few staff we had in, in Amherst to Northampton over the winter. And it, it was really a, a really great like morale boost for everyone there uh, to have a full staff uh, once again. And so that's been great to see um, that kind of energy come back. Um, so that leaves our Amherst location. Um, it's been a, it's been a difficult, uh, you know, winter of contemplation, uh, certainly, and certainly, uh, going through all the, the numbers with the, uh, the beauty of tax season come the first of the year. So, uh, at this point, we are unable to reopen as Jake's restaurant as we were, uh, we don't see that being financially viable uh, for a number of reasons that we can go into and if, if you require. Um, <clears throat> however, we do see it, that space being a viable business as a private event space and, uh, and as a community gathering space. Um, and because we certainly don't want to give up on the area, we really like North Amherst, we like being in Amherst. We've made a lot of wonderful connections uh, locally uh, with other business owners and patrons and in, in, in the town itself. And so, uh, so basically we, we've been concocting sort of planning a, a new business plan and see if it can, um, can happen with our current level of licensing. Um, myself and Chris have, have spoken with uh, Steve, <clears throat> just a month ago when we kind of started to put the pieces together and and so the timing kind of worked out as we said we would touch base um, around this time so so here we are and I can give you I can go in whatever direction you want me to as far as explanation um, but I guess I'll kind of maybe let you ask some questions however you want to play it so uh, Doug and then Gaston well I, I have just a couple of questions in in you know, and I'm thinking about sort of, you know, the license that you currently hold. I certainly understand the constraints you guys are operating as far as even acquiring staff, much less, you know, having people come in the door, but, but just having staff, you know, to, to be able to have the restaurant open much less than uh, subsequently, you know, have a, a sufficient uh, traffic to, to make it work. I know a lot of restaurants are struggling, so we're sympathetic to that. Um, as far as keeping it as an event space and, you know, thinking about a sort of license, you know, the, the license is, um, you know, fairly broad in what it allows. And, and so, you know, that's, that's possible. But I think what we'd like in, in regard to that is, um, or at least I'm going to express an opinion about this. Maybe it's not what the entire board likes. Um, is, is, and I'm curious about is how often, do you, you know, when you're planning this and thinking about event space and, and you know, having things uh, in that location, what, do you, what is your expectation for, um, for lack of a term, workload, you know, how many, you know, a couple of days a week you expect to start sure. space, you know, what's your, what's your target? And, and I think we're thinking about it. I think our, our thoughts are relative to, you know, we got a license is available, I think seven days a week. And, you know, if you're only using one day a week, is that how we want to use up one of our quoted license? Right. I think we do or don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying we want to some context around what you're thinking about how often you'd have events or what you'd like to be the case. I mean, you're not there yet probably as far as uh, scheduling, but sure. just curious. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, I think that's a great place to start. And I appreciate that question. Um, yeah. So during this, like during this winter and this process of, of trying to sort this all out, you know, I think the one, the one thing that came to mind quite quickly of what we were um, really unable to, you know, capitalize on uh, as just a business in general was catering. Um, and it was private events uh, at the space due to our, our lack of um, robust staffing. And so that's where it kind of started. Um, the amount of business that we've already turned down or have been unwilling to completely, um, you know, lock in because of the need for this conversation um, does tells it, tell us that, you know, we could very easily be looking at, you know, three to, I would say three events, three to four events a week, most likely three. Um, and these events in our mind and what the vast majority of them all are, um, are after wedding, uh, you know, wedding parties, wedding brunches, uh, wedding receptions. So mostly wedding heavy, um, yeah. birthdays, retirement parties, um, and as such along, along those graduation parties as well. 
Um, so kind of your, your standard issue, if you will, for private events that, you know, most restaurants are accustomed to. Um, so we do see about three, possibly four during certain busy seasons, if you will, graduation season, traditional wedding seasons of the, of the fall, um, uh, holiday parties as well. We're really getting uh, excited about being a possibility um, as we, yeah, just going back from our, just our, 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 our archive of emails from the past two years of all of the parties we didn't take. Um, so that, and so certainly the ebbs and flows of the, of the different seasons for, for those particular events, but I would say three and then four be more realistic during um, those high seasons, if that uh, answers your question. Yeah, I think that's very helpful for, for us to understand, you know, sort of the, the, the capacity you're trying to operate at, which, you know, starts to compare with, you know, it's not the same as seven days a week, but, you know, it's pushing half the week on average that you're, you're actively using the license. I think that's a, you know, uh, you know, there's a number of restaurants, I'm not sure, you know, I've experienced this in, in town where, you know, restaurants, which might have in the past been closed on a Monday, you mm -hmm. know, or, or not closed at all, have closed on Monday and Tuesday. Um, you know, so there's a lot of places that have shifted down to a five day a week schedule, certainly uh, the restaurant options. So, you know, certainly, uh, you know, if you're at three or four, that's, that's getting kind of close to that. And, and, uh, you know, so that's, that's, um, helpful for us, I think, is uh, framing this and thinking about it. Um, I have a question for Steve, our, our liaison a little bit regarding the license, the current license as it, as it is now would, would, would be sufficient in a, uh, in an event space like that, um, there's not a there's not a separate license for, or specific license like that because if it was a if it was just like a catering license that they get through the state, they couldn't have it at a fixed location like this. Is that correct? That's correct, and um, I believe I mentioned this when I had my conversation with them um, earlier. But yeah, that you know the state's guidance on um, on you know, the hours of operation and keeping in, uh, in accordance with those defined things are a bit unclear. I mean, I know there's lots of businesses we can think about around the state that have this kind of business model and have liquor licenses. Um, the Red Barn at Hampshire College in, in our town used to have this. Um, so um, I have no doubt that there'd be a way for it to be done. Um, I might have to, you know, speak to somebody in the ABCC about, you know, if there would be any tweaks needed. But um, I do believe that, you know, either with this license or with, you know, one day licenses, they'd absolutely be able to, to support this kind of business model. And I suspect that it would be like, like possible with this type of license as well. Okay, thanks. Um, Doug, and I know Gaston, do you still have something? To, did you want to say something first or? No, I, I was also trying to make sense of, of the license situation and, and it's, yeah, I guess it's not the catering because of the fixed location. It's not the one day because it's, it's too many. And um, so it almost seems like it's only really viable because we're not maxed out. Okay, thanks, Doug. Yeah, just another follow-up for, for, for Chris and Alex a little bit about, um, I mean, I get the sense, and maybe I'm reading between the lines that you know, if 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 possible, it sounds like you'd like to go back to operating a restaurant if if you know circumstances sort of progress in a way that allows for that. Is is that a fair and accurate statement of what you'd like to do? And oh. and and if you could, how long do you think it'll take before you get to that place? Well, I you know I I don't know with what certainty I could I could say, and I'll, and, I'll, and Chris, I'll, we're pretty on the same page. Um, that we will say, but, you know, this would be a new venture for us. We have done a lot of catering in the past, so that is not new. And we have hosted events at the restaurant and that one in particular, but as its main and only business model as it's, 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 you know, sort of function that would be new. So I couldn't say with any like real conviction that, or certainty that we want to, that this would be a stopgap procedure. Certainly, we know restaurants, full service restaurants, we know Jake's and that's very familiar. And if we were to say tomorrow, all of our staffing issues and other difficulties that we've had would go away, then certainly going back to what we know is you know, usually the path of uh, least resistance. And that's usually a good thing. But I can't say anything with any guarantees. But if this does become, you know, a, a I would say more sustainable, more profitable, uh, healthier sort of um, business model that you know it actually works um, for really everyone involved. The 
the town, the, the, the restaurant, the, the restaurant, the, the space itself, the community, um, then yeah, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop something that was working. Um, so I, I wish I had some more clarity on that, but, um, but yeah, it's kind of, it is a new thing and I guess we're gonna have to see how that plays out. This is almost like those old banqueting halls you used to see, right? Where you'd, you'd run uh, them and they'd have everything would, would be there. But I'm, I'm sorry, can you um, say, it, say it, again? It's almost like those old banqueting halls used to see them. Yeah, pr yeah. precisely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 pretty yeah. much. I mean, uh, and it just, it's kind of funny, just uh, about an hour before I got a text message from a wedding that we we're supposed to do at a restaurant before the pandemic of like, hey, is the, when you guys open back up for, can we book our wedding, you know, again? So yeah. it was just kind of, yeah, that's so it's kind of just like a, re a rental old banquet hall, if you will. Okay, in, all right. In North Amherst. Okay. <laughs> okay. Doug, what do you got? Just a, just a follow-up question on that front. Um, yep. Remind us, if you would, the capacity of the in the sort of square footage that you have available <clears throat> in the space. Oh, um, sh I don't. Chris, you have happened to. I don't have the square footage uh, sure. off the top of my head. Do you? On the floor, I believe it's about 1,200 square feet on the floor. That sounds and about right. Yes, because 2,000 total, right? For the whole back of houses? Yeah. It was about five um, on the original application? I'm yeah. pretty certain. Yeah, I think it was, it was uh, 2,000 total, 800 being in the back and 1,200 in the front. That's right. And I think for capacity, it was uh, 55? 55 or 65. Yeah. Yeah, seated. Yeah. 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 All right, thanks. Yeah, I, I sort of asked that just to have a sense of sort of what what kind of events are you know going to fit, and that's you know yeah precisely sort of small to medium sized wedding party or or like you say a retirement event or a graduation event that's sort of perfect for that because you know the difficulty with a larger space um, you know is is uh, it prices people out. So if you can you know if you can take a hundred or two hundred, that's often too big a space for somebody who wants a more private event or a smaller event. So Abs it, absolutely it might fit nicely into the to the mix of businesses within town so great yeah certainly okay well thanks do you as anyone else have any other questions for chris or alex if not um okay well i guess thank you so much for coming on in oh and yeah certainly we're, yeah, we're really really glad to hear um yeah. do we want to check in again or yeah i think i do have a kind of question on that front is uh, when do you guys expect okay. some some you know some moves to be made on this kind of on this front yeah, uh, great. Other. I was yeah, I was hoping uh, that would come up. So, yeah, certainly it was contingent on on our conversation this evening. Um, uh, we've been we've been working on it uh, pretty pretty hard in the in the backgrounds. Um, I we're hoping to capitalize on the graduation season. Um, so we are looking to get back to some requests that have already been made uh, in the coming weeks. So I would say by by mid April to have be to be hosting events. In whatever capacity, um, you know, maybe unfold then. So in, in about a month, I guess. I'll split, and I'll say in, in one month. Oh, Great. Oh, Gaston, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I, w one more question. I'm 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 trying to uh, look ahead and and picture that you have a, a really successful 2022 with this uh, event model, and it's going to be time for you to apply for your license renewal at the end of the year. And, and I'm just trying to um, get the board to, to think about whether um, how that renewal application could come in that we would be able to approve it for 23. In, in terms of, yeah, Doug, what are you thinking yeah, about Doug. that? The, the thing I'm thinking about is, you know, at, at that point, now they won't have a full year of experience sort of working with it, but I think they'll have a much better sense of sort of days of operation and likely, uh, you know, and, and so they can kind of give us a, an idea. So we, you know, they, they may want to, you know, one of the things the state is uncomfortable with is having, you know, license from, you know, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m., seven days a week, and then you're only open like some small fraction of that, right? They, they, they sort of frown on that just as a, you know, if you read the regs, that's, they kind of don't like that. But at the same time, we as a, as a board may be okay with that if we feel like that gives them the, flex, you know, they're typically, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday brunch, you know, is when those three events happen a week, and then an occasional Tuesday night or occasional Wednesday, you know, we don't want to sort of, if we feel like that, that's working for them and working for us as a community, I mean, we might be able to, 
be okay with a license that covers more time than what they'll literally be open. But I think we want to sort of hear about their experience pretty significantly yeah. at that point, kind of see, they, like I said, they won't have gone through the full season. They won't have done a, a, a winter holiday season so much by the time they come back to us, but they'll have done graduation, you know, weddings in June, weddings in the fall. Um, you know, they'll probably have people trying to book time with them for the, for the holidays and, and into the spring. So, you know, they may have a sense of, of, you know, where they are. So, I, I, you know, I think for us, that'll be what's critical yeah. um, to hear about. If, if, yeah, go ahead. If, if I can follow, so I, I think what would be um, great is if if you can kind of keep your records or thinking about providing a nice long exhibit that, you know, obviously you don't have to tell us any names, but gives us a very good picture about the the the, the business you did in 2022, so that we can find the right way of of thinking about a renewal that that meets our our responsibilities um, on the board. Yeah, absolutely. That's, um, yeah, I think um, touching back uh, this fall would be really helpful for us too to kind of give it a, a rundown of our hopefully very successful uh, experiment in North Amherst. Um, yeah, and, 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 and certainly on that point, you know, like we are so thankful for uh, the town support. Um, your, your support, uh, understanding of our situation, and not just ours, but all businesses in, in general. And, and so the more we communicate and work together, like it, it's been a very, um, it's been a really great process for us. So thank you very much for that. Oh, sure, thank you. Um, I think it's really exciting. It's, um, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how it ha what ha happens this summer and into the fall. Um, if we wanna touch base back again in, so licenses renew, start up in like November, December. Do we want to meet again in October, another six months before that, or? That sounds great. So that we, yeah, just so we can- um, That'd be perfect. Hear what, how it's been going, um, yeah. And kind of plan for what we're gonna do with license renewal. Absolutely, kind of send. Okay, fantastic. Are there any other questions, um, Steve or anyone else? If not, okay. No, I'm, I'll be speaking to um, the town attorney on these issues um, later this week for something unrelated. So I will just um, pick his brain a little bit about what he thinks. I mean, I think what, what you know, a lot of us are coming back to is just that defined hours regulation, which is a bit unclear, but um, I'll just try to see if there's any precedent when it regards to banquet halls and things like that. Okay. All right, that's great. Thank you, Steve. Anything else? Any other questions? No? Okay. I mean, it's just occurring to me, you, you know, you maybe you'll have to turn it into a private club. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, we, we, we go by the guidance of the town, so we'll... Uh... Yeah, no, no yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a board joke. It's, we have worked on <laughs> private club regulation, so it's on kind of on, on top of our mind. But uh, uh, thank you anyway, just uh, um, sharing your where we are. Great. Right. All right. Cool. Thanks so much, and we'll look forward to hearing from you in uh, October. Okay, wonderful. Thank you all so all right. much. Really appreciate this. Right. Good luck in the meantime. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, all right. Sorry, got to get back here. So now we are moving on to, so that was Jake's eggs. Meeting, why, meeting time? Do we, we did that. Do we need to talk about this again? Or Steve? Left on the agenda in case there was any changes, but um, I think we are okay. gonna be, next was for the fourth, right? Yes, the fourth yeah. of April, that's what I have. Is that right? Does everybody have that? Where the time, that? if you would be so kind to remind us. Oh, six o'clock? Are we staying so with we're six? Still, we're still Monday, is that correct? Till Mondays until we shift to two. You had a date. We're shifting to Tuesdays. I mean, you know, if people like five, I, um, I, I could do it on the day that we're talking about. If I'm open on that front myself. On Mondays. Or on this. On on either on either Mondays or Tuesdays. I I I could do five p.m. If if oh. uh, if if there's if if others would prefer uh, that would be. Fine with me. Are we is Monday? Because Dylan, we switched. You switched your schedule, right? Or... Yeah, but uh, five is also good with me. Six is also good with me. I have a small preference, I guess, for five, but either one. Yeah. Does anyone prefer five? Hallie, are you okay with five? 
Doug? Um, as long as CJ's in town, I can do five. Uh, if he's out of oh, town, I have to get Greta from Ballet at 5.30, but okay. that he's scheduled to be here the 4th. He's been gone for four weeks, but he's home okay. now. So. Okay. Oh, wow. That's long. Um, okay. We do like a consistent, it'd be nice to keep it kind of consistent. So, so we just say so six. Keep it, keep it at five. And then for the most part, I can also just phone in while I'm in the car too. Okay. So I was going to say, I'm, I'm most pro consistency more than anything. Uh, okay. So I'd rather be consistent at six than. But, uh, but just to be clear, we we were are we talking about the the one Monday we have left or our regular Tuesday? I think we're talking about both of. That. Does anyone have a problem with five on five in general? Five Monday or Tuesday or Sunday? Wait, we, which day is the dance class, Hallie? Mondays. Mondays. Oh. So we only, that's only this one, we only have one Monday, right? Am I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. As okay. So then, okay. so two, I mean, if the, Tuesday at five work for everybody? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So we can do Monday at fourth at five and then thereafter Tuesdays at five. All right. So that would be the Monday, the fourth, and then Tuesday, the 19th, we'd be switching to Tuesdays. Yes. And both at five o'clock. Okay. Yes. Uh, aren't we meeting on the 26th, not the? Yes, we are meeting on the 26th. Thank you, Hallie. That's correct. I have that circled because we couldn't on the 19th. Yes, April vacation. Right, because of April vacation. So it's the 26th is a Tuesday. And then we swing into May on Tuesdays at 5. All right. All right, super. Okay. So meeting time done and discussion item C, adult use marijuana regulations done. No. I don't have anything new for anybody. Um, okay. I think I was just to re recap, I was gonna reread through and see if there was anything I spotted in the in regs. Um, and I think the other piece to that is starting to put together the, the bylaw that they would have to pass to create a license. So oh, yeah. um, I looked at that very briefly um, and didn't get it, it didn't get anywhere really consistent you know of any substantial way so I'll I'll be in touch on that next time okay okay great thank you any questions for Doug in the meantime if not okay uh, lunch cart regulations as I told you yesterday I have been in touch with Manny Johanneke about the other half of uh, parking space lunch cart Board of license commissioner authority and um, we can have just, we can now license stuff on the sidewalks, but the TSO is still discussing it or is going to be discussing the licensing on the, the park, street parking. So that half of it has not been put on the agenda yet. I've written to Dorothy, Council Dorothy Pam, who is on the TSO, and um, she's going to get back to me with the um, date that that will be going on the agenda. And so that part is still outstanding and I'm still chipping away at the lunch cart regulations and that's all I have. Does anyone have any questions? Nope, okay, thanks. Um, guidelines, regulations for liquor license decisions, Hallie. I gave them to Steve and yes. he's meeting with council this week. So hopefully we'll get feedback by next meeting or the meeting after that. Okay, and you sent, Steve sent out a copy to everybody that was attached. To I included your, in the packet just in case anybody wanted package? to see it. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, any questions for Hallie? Okay. Um, license fee comparison chart or comparison without chart. Yeah, I'm, I'm no, no updates to report. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Are there I any... do have one today. Oh. Wow. Um, so I was served with a subpoena, um, or I suppose we all were in a sense, but um, it is for um, documents relating to lit um, for uh, this, um, this uh, broad array of things here. Um, my understanding from speaking with the council is that um, this is relating to a personal injury case where um, two people got in some kind of altercation outside of lit after it closed and one of them broke his clavicle. Um, and so lit has been uh, also um, also sued in this proceeding. 
Um, so I will be uh, complying with that. I think it is quite broad, especially for things, um, you know, all uh, all notices issued by the town. I mean, that would include everything from all those, you know, millions of COVID rate, you know, rulings we had in 2020 and everything. So um, I'll be speaking with council to try to uh, see if we can get that to be a bit man more manageable, but um, that the deadline for that is May 29th, so, or May 6th, so. Okay. I will either be supplying that or potentially going to be deposed. We will see. Oh, okay. But this is, this can not possibly have anything to do with the, for the reason we pulled the license, right? My um, guess is that it's completely unrelated, but okay. um, I would imagine that a um, revocation would probably be an interesting thing for a, uh, a plaintiff's attorney in such a case. Okay. All right. So, but we have- and I can see our two things. lawyers nodding their heads. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure either side might want to use it. I don't know. Like, I, I wasn't there anymore. What are you talking about? Yeah. But we, we don't have to do anything. No, I will just take care of that. It. But okay. I just thought you might find that interesting. And that's why I'm already going to be talking to uh, council later this week. So I figured I would just roll our uh, guidelines right in there. Okay, great. That is oh, sorry you have that annoyance. Yeah. Steve. Thank you, Steve. Sure. <laughs> I get a free trip down to the beautiful city of Holyoke. It can't be all that bad. Oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for that. Um, are there any other topics not reasonably anticipated or anything else anyone wants to? Do we have any? There's a lot of construction in town or new places coming up. Are there any in the pipeline? I saw there's Coronation Cafe and the Oyster Bar and a couple other. We do have, um, yes, Provisions has um, filed their um, their application to take over the Cousins license. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still reviewing that, but that should be coming up. Um, the um, we do have Provisions, I believe, is is getting close to um, to submitting. I was there for a construction meeting um, last week, and um, they are at work, so um, that should be forthcoming at some point. Um, I guess a related but slightly different topic not reasonably anticipated is also that I did hear um, hear word that the um, there may be some changes at the state level regarding um, you know not for these out temporary outdoor dining areas extending that temporary authority and not requiring a um, a full uh, alteration of premises which is which is good news um, so we probably won't get those applications but I do believe we'll get provisions oyster bar is um, I don't know exactly where they are but they have been um, in contact with us. And um, I did get some inquiries for something at the Old Town Tavern site. I don't know if, they're, if that's going to come through or not, but. Um, okay. Whatever happened to protocol? They kind of, you said they started file, like getting their stuff together for a license and then it never. They did started. submit an application last summer and then um, they had a couple issues with it and I let them know about the issues and they chose to withdraw. So okay. I don't know. What, okay. what really happened there, but. Okay. Oh, I have to ask for my son, the vegan bakery. Yes, that is, um, I believe they're underway. I haven't been as involved with that as it doesn't have liquor, but I believe they are either close to or open. Okay. Where is that going in? Where the Henyon formerly was. Oh, okay. Um, Did we do the CV for that? Common victual? No. Yeah, they will need a common victual. Well, I guess if they're doing all off premises items they wouldn't need one and i believe that's what their focus is because they won't be serving anything for um i know henyon needed to have one because they served coffee but um i think they might just be doing strictly off premises type of thing right so no no dunny in the facility only grab and go it would be a bit tight yeah okay the other thing i was wondering steve i drove past to where the old remember the old lumber yard restaurant Yes. And I could have sworn I said, it said waffle something on the top. And wheelhouse. Oh. Wheelhouse? Their, wheelhouse. It used to be catering kitchen. Oh, that's the, is that a catering kitchen? Okay. Maybe I was just hungry. I don't know. I was, um, <laughs> but it, there hadn't been a sign up there. And I was driving by fast and I thought, oh, waffles. No? Okay. <laughs> that would be nice. Never mind. All right. You said used to be their catering kitchen, Hallie? Is that the or I don't know if they're open still or not, but they'd been using that for um, catering. Okay. 
Yeah, last I, just, I heard they were in there, but. Okay. I just thought. I tried to get them to do something last summer, and I think, I or they were doing grab and go meals. I forget, but they weren't okay. to do something. Okay. All right. Never. All right. Um, all right. So no more topics reasonably anticipated. Um, review of minutes. Thank you, Steve, for the minutes from February. Keep and chipping away a little bit. A, does everyone have a chance to at least go through the minutes a little bit? Or want to take a few minutes and look through them now? And um, see if there's anything you have questions about. It's a very short meeting. I took a quick look. I don't. I didn't see anything that wasn't yeah. accurate. Okay. Mostly, we we had a couple of licenses we wanted to get through, which is why we had a brief meeting like that. So. Okay. Anybody else? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Um, so moved. All right. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Ellie. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The minutes for, is it February 2nd? Eight. February 8th are approved. Um, OK. And uh, we're at adjournment. So if no one else has anything else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn uh before we go i actually just want to ask steve two quick questions uh one well what'd you hear about what's going into ott i haven't heard anything about it i got an inquiry from three uh recent umass graduates who um had moved to southie but wanted to um keep in touch with the amherst area and they were considering um opening a bar in there but that was a couple weeks ago and i haven't heard back from them so i don't know if they are continuing to pursue that plan. Yeah. And a uh, second question is uh, any any updates? Have you heard anything about how much longer we're all going to be remote for? That's a great question. Um, that's something we've been I've been discussing you know, with a couple of the people on my floor last week. Um, I don't think there is any answer yet. One one more question. Any uh, any news on the Drake? They are um, building out. I think I know they made a couple changes to their floor plan, which the ABCC approves. Um, they are getting fairly close, I think. I think they were shooting for April, so they will have to get in. I was actually just about to email uh, Gabrielle after this meeting to remind her to get her Common Vic and live entertainment applications in. That crossed my mind as well. Cool. Okay. What about Hazel's Kitchen? Because I know that we approved that back in. They um, opened. Um, well, they are open. Kind of. They had some serious flaws with the fire alarm system. And so there was a couple of events they had where they had to hire a you know, private, I think they were private events they were already engaged for. And so they had to hire a fire watch, which is um, they had a couple of firefighters on a uh, deployment there to, oh, no. if the fire alarm's <laughs> broken, they have to physically watch for a fire. Right. Um, so I think they did that a couple of times and I think it's still trying to be fixed. Okay. I think it, it was something like the um, if the alarm goes off in the basement, the rest of the building doesn't go off. Okay. And um, I think if it goes off upstairs, it shuts off the gas for the building too. So okay. they better hope that the upstairs neighbors are burning incense or anything. Yeah, right. Okay, that's too bad. Okay, anything else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? To move. All right, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, take a roll call out. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. We are adjourned at 7.06 PM. And we'll see everybody here on the April. April. And, and we were changing the Monday time to, to five as well, right? Yes, Monday, April, Monday, April 4th at five o'clock. Okay, very good. So a little earlier. All right. And then the 26th. Right. Yeah. And then the 26th. Right. All right. Thanks, okay. everybody. Bye. See you Bye. Later. Bye. Bye.